Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson four of the control of body and mind unit. It is titled the corpus callosum and the split brain. So you should have um, looked up what the corpus callosum is. So it should be a little bit um, familiar to you, but we will get into it. Uh, this is very, very interesting as well as I think the assignment is very interesting. It is a very real world example. Um, so um, yeah, we'll get into it. So hemispheres, key point one, the brain is essentially divided into two halves and they're known as hemispheres, even though your brain isn't quite a sphere, but it's, no, it's known as hemispheres. These two halves are connected in the middle by the corpus callosum. So there is no other pathway for the right side of your brain and the left side of your brain to interact with one another. Uh, there is no pathway other than the corpus callosum for your brains to communicate. It is um, an important part, but turns out not essential for life. So the corpus callosum is right in the middle. It's not at the top, but it's kind of sunk down in the middle of your brain, and it is a bundle of nerves. There's lots of nerves that go back and forth and send information to each half. So since different parts of your cortex control different functions uh, the communication between the two sides is important, but not necessary. The brainstem, remember, is the part of your brain that controls the, the parts that are most necessary for life. Um, so the corpus callosum doesn't interfere with the parts of the brain sending down through the brainstem to the rest of your body. It interferes with cutting it or, you know, that information there would be, you know, passed, not be allowed to be passed to either side. So um, the communication between the two sides is important, but not necessary for life. For example, speech is on your left side of the brain and memory is on the right side, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can't live if the one side of your brain can't understand the other side. So each hemisphere is connected to one half of the body in a crisscrossed fashion. The left side of the brain controls the right side of the body including the right hand and the, it would take information from the right eye uh, and the right ear. This is why, uh, this is the reason a stroke to the left side of the brain will affect the right side of the body, including numbness and paralysis. So uh, your right side of your brain controls the left side of your body and the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. Um, that's why a stroke is always the opposite side of whatever side is being affected. So here's a picture of the corpus callosum. So this brain has been, I don't know, dried maybe, and it's kind of pulled apart here. And this connection is the corpus callosum. So it is what allows information to be passed back and forth. And it's cool, it's good, but it's not required for you to live. So in a normal brain, the two hemispheres communicate through the corpus callosum, but some people have grand mal seizures, which are very serious. They are the most severe kind of seizure. Uh, if you separate the brain hemispheres or cut them, cut the corpus callosum, it is proven to lessen the number and severity of these seizures. But as a result, the person has a split brain. So you cut this part, and the two halves of the brain can't chat, but all these neurons kind of calm down because they don't know they no longer have a job. So the seizures are prevented, but the two halves of the brain cannot communicate. The person has a split brain. Um, the person has two brains that operate independently of each other. Uh, so that is what our assignment is all about: is kind of finding out how these two things interact. Um, but studies have shown that you know a person can live a mostly normal life with this, this situation. Uh, there are some interesting studies though that have given us into insight into how these two uh, halves of the brain interact. Um, so generally people can live a normal life. It's not a very common procedure, um, but studying these people has been very interesting in the field of psychology. So this is an example, and you're going to look some more information up about this through the videos and then summarize it. So a blindfolded man whose brain has been split, so he cannot see, he holds a ball in his right hand. 
um, he can say that it is a ball because speech is on the left side of the brain. So he can feel it in his right hand and the information is passed to the left side of his brain where the speech center is and he can say that it is a ball. So he can feel it and the left side of the brain says that it's a ball. He is able to do that. If you were to place the ball instead in his left hand, uh, he would not be able to say what it is. The information about it being a ball, and remember he's blindfolded, would be sent from his left side to his right brain. The right brain is not involved in speech. So he would not be able to say what it is since the corpus callosum is severed. Information from the left hand is sent to the right hemisphere of the brain. And since the corpus callosum is severed, information cannot cross to the speech center in the left hemisphere. So this is just an example, um, but there are many different ways that people can be you know, affected by this. So uh, there are some important terms for you to um, define here, respond, detect, and stimulate. And then what I'd like you to do is check out these videos here and um, summarize them in the, your booklet. So um, it is, these are very interesting, they're very important, they're not very long, um, but give a good summary of them and there's more instructions as well, I believe, in your booklet. Uh, thanks so much for watching everyone and I will see you in class.